Hey friends, today I want to introduce you to one of my favorite apps. Um, this is an introduction to the application called Mood Meter. And this is put out by um, Mark Brackett and team. I, I'm sure there's a whole host of people involved in it. At um, Mark Brackett is a researcher and a lecturer from Yale, and he is the author of an amazing book called Permission to Feel. Um, and this is really targeting people who haven't had permission to feel. Um, if you like the idea of learning more about your emotional vocabulary, uh, your ability to communicate your emotions at a given time, uh, to understand what's going on inside of your own um, internal climate, I highly recommend the book. Um, and if you're not down with reading the book, uh, Mark Brackett has a bunch of videos that you could just Google. Uh, you can look on YouTube and watch um watch his discussions. They're really terrific discussions. He does a book club version where you can kind of read along with the book. Um, and if you don't want to be involved in the book, that is just fine. Um, it's sort of skill set and memoir all in one. Uh, but you could also just go for this tool. So the tool comes out of all of that research. I, I brought it up on my phone so I could kind of, you can't see this at all because it's just whited out, but I'm going to read to you what's on my screen. Um, because this this is an app that's only available like on phones. It's a smartphone app. Uh, it does, from what I can tell, doesn't have a um, web interface. So uh, the Mood Meter app does cost a little bit of money. I think it was like $2 and it's lifetime use, at least when I bought it, which is probably a couple of years ago. Um, so, you know, take a look. Don't just buy it like you know, think about whether you want to buy it. I'm, I'm not advocating for like a super expensive uh, tool here. Uh, but I do like this tool. I have recommended it to a number of people and I've had very good feedback from clients of mine who have also started using this tool. So um, I'm going to introduce you to it and I'm going to walk through an exercise of it. So I have up on the screen, you can see there's four quadrants and it says mood and meter, mood meter, uh, and there's red, yellow, blue, and green. So there's the four colors and it represents different sets of feelings associated with pleasantness of an emotion. So not bad or good, just is it pleasant or unpleasant? So that's a, a subjective experience like is this a pleasant feeling for me or is it an unpleasant feeling for me? Um, and then what level of energy does it have? Is it high energy or low energy? So those are our, um, our access points. So then you get into the quadrants. The, and I'm just referring to my notes over here. The red quadrant represents emotions that are unpleasant and have a lot of energy, such as anger or frustration. And the one I'm going to walk you through today that I'm experiencing in this moment uh, is frustration. So I'm going to show you how, the, how I'm using the tool. Um, the blue quadrant represents emotions that are unpleasant and have low energy or no energy. So disappointment and boredom would be examples in the blue quadrant. This is a great tool for kids, by the way, because you could get into the quadrants and start to grow your emotional vocabulary. Uh, the green quadrant includes emotions that feel pleasant and have little or no energy, like feeling peaceful, relaxed. And the yellow quadrant includes emotions that feel pleasant and have lots of energy, like happy and proud. Okay, so that's the, that's the idea of the meter. So here's how we use it. So I brought it up on my, on my little phone. And the screen comes up. I'm just going to read it to you because I can't, I don't think there's a way for me to I mean, is there any way? Oh, maybe. It says, hi, Deb. Hi, Deb. <laughs> How are you feeling right now? Okay. And then I'm going to click on the button that says, I feel. And it's going to bring me to just the, there we go. So just the four quadrants without all of the little um, words like you see on the on the slide that I've got on the screen. This is where you start. So you just kind of get into the quadrant. And this is why I say it's really good for kids because you could just kind of shorthand that. Where are you on your um, emotion, you know, mood, on your mood right now? Are you feeling red, yellow, blue, or green? There's a lot of um, uh, uh, related psychotherapy things that we can do based on that. Um, 
yeah, I probably shouldn't get into too much detail on that until we're ready to dive in. But okay, so uh, as I mentioned, I have just gone through something that has me feeling. Um, so I'm starting with what quadrant N am I in? I am in red right now. So I am feeling um, high energy and it's unpleasant feelings for me. Does that make sense? Now remember, I have an avoidant style, so you may not be able to see that on my face, but that's what's happening inside of me in this moment. So I'm gonna pick on the red quadrant on my phone. And when I do that, it brings me to just the red section. And you can see there's no words on there. It's just like little squares. I don't know how well you can see that. But I'm going to start poking around, trying to get to what kind of feeling I have. So as I poke, it says, are you tense? You know, it's just like giving me an option. Well, this, see how it says tense? Well, it's not. I'm so sorry about the lack of um, focus. I don't know how to fix that. But that word up there in bright white is tense. I'm not, it's not tense. That's not quite right. So then I go, am I nervous? That's not quite right. Am I irritated? Yeah, I am. I am a little irritated. Uh, but it feels higher energy than that. So I'm going to go back up on the scale, high energy and really unpleasant. And the more I go to the left on that and up into the brighter red, I get too frustrated. So I'm going to say, I feel frustrated and then I'm going to click next. So then it gives me a chance to kind of consider, is this really the right thing? Cause it's going to define that word for me. Um, and if this isn't the right word, then I go back and pick a different word. Frustrated, feeling negative and discouraged because you are blocked from doing something. That is how I'm feeling. So I'm just identifying the feeling and then it asks me to reflect, what is my current activity? So is it related to work? Is it related to home and family? Or is it related to other? So this is related to the dog. So that is home and family. So I'm picking that. And then it asks for further reflection. Can you identify one or more causes of your emotion? Capture your ideas below. So it gives you a little space for journaling, which means you can save your experiences over time, you get little like, oh, you checked in, you checked in your, about your emotions um, on this day and on this day. And, you know, you're feeling these things over time. It's a, it's a nice place to capture what was leading to. So what was leading to, what has me feeling frustrated right now? You guys, you know about the dog. So little Willow, she is smart, but like, is she intentionally trying to like not learn certain things because she keeps attacking the older dog. She bolts into the house. We are really slow on the potty training. So I am feeling negative. So going back to this definition of frustrated, I am feeling negative about that. I am also feeling discouraged, like disheartened. Like I don't feel good about it. I thought we would be much further ahead and I'm feeling blocked about the whole thing. And if I'm honest, I'm feeling a little lonely about it as well. Okay, so I captured that whole thing, right, in the little journal, and then I click next. So look, the goal is to identify the feeling. Name it to tame it. Dan Siegel says, name it to tame it. So just by naming it, I'm getting my amygdala under control. I'm putting my lid back on. I'm no longer flipping my lid. My vocabulary is here in my prefrontal cortex. I am able to identify the feeling of frustration related to the dog. <laughs> okay, you get it? Now, here's the next question. Would you like to shift your emotion or stay the same? And sometimes really we do want to stay the same. I, you know, it might feel a little counterintuitive to say like, yeah, I, I want to stay in angry or I want to stay frustrated. Um, isn't what I'm going to choose because I don't want to stay frustrated right now. Um, but but I could see times where I would want to stay frustrated and that's perfectly fine. So it's giving you a genuine question. Would you like to shift it or do you want to stay? Because look, sometimes there's a lot of activation and agency in distressing feelings. And so if you don't want to shift because you need to go have a mama bear conversation with your school teacher or um, you need to Hulk smash through some, you know, 
ADHD uh, wall of awful situation and you need to get a handle on some anger to like bust through it. Okay. Um, in my case, I'm feeling frustrated at the dog. I want to train the dog and my level of frustration isn't going to help us. Uh, she doesn't know I'm frustrated. She doesn't know how to help me be unfrustrated. She can't just be better behaved because I wish it, you know, and being frustrated isn't going to help either one of us. I don't want to interact with her that way. And she, I imagine, doesn't want frustrated me. So uh, I am going to choose that I want to shift. Okay. So I'm going to click on shift. Um, I will say that when you click on, you know, I want to shift my emotion. If you stay the same, it's like, you know, good for you. You know, enjoy. Thanks for checking in. But if you say I do want to shift, it's going to um, give you a suggestion, a tool, a coping skill that might help. Uh, and sometimes a quote. So I will say, in my experience, the um, tool that's given is maybe 70% of the time something I would actually do. But that's fine. Like in the care and keeping of me, there are certain things that are helpful and certain things that are not. And I've done a lot of work to know the kinds of things that help me shift. So I would take shifting your emotion, the suggestion that they provide, Try it out. And if it's not a good shift for you, uh, try a different one. You know what I mean? Like, as I always say, like, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. If you feel like that's not a good way for me to shift, um, or that's not like ideal in this circumstance, and I'll give you, any, I'll give you what it came up for me. I'm going to apply it today, but if this had come up for me yesterday, I wouldn't have done it. And I'm going to tell you why. So what it's saying on shifting my emotions, remember, I'm feeling frustrated. Um, and the shifting your emotion suggestion that comes from mood meter is get some fresh air. You know what? I am going to go outside and get some fresh air. And I'm not going to go in the backyard where the dog is. I'm going to go uh, in the front yard, go look at my little fruit trees and um, just take some nice breaths and get some fresh air. Now, today it is 87 degrees as I sit here. Yesterday at this time, it was like 104 and it was gross. Oh, I'm not going to go out and get some fresh air. So I would have done a different thing, right? So if that suggestion, if I was feeling frustrated yesterday, I probably did feel frustrated about something yesterday. Uh, and I had done my mood meter and it said, go get some fresh air. I'd be like, I'm probably not going to do that, but what else could I do? Right. And I have other tools that I can use. So in this case, I am going to take the advice um, and go get some fresh air after I finish recording this. And um, then the other thing is it um, has a quote and s some people are into quotes and some people are not. Again, if it's not for you, let it go. Uh, the real value to my mind of the app is learning the language, the vocabulary that goes with emotion and then naming it to tame it. Going back to Dan Siegel's name it to tame it or bringing things from the downstairs brain to the upstairs brain happens through, you know, we have a feeling, we are a feeling creature who thinks. So identify the feeling that brings it up into your thinky parts of your brain. So that alone is worth the app, learning the language um, and practicing with naming it in order to tame it. So, but it also comes with a quote. So the quote that comes from frustrated today for me is, uh, by Elizabeth Kenny, and it says, "He who angers you conquers you." So if I apply that, if I apply that to the puppy, like, is the puppy really angering me? It's actually me that's angering me. That you know, I procrastinated on the training. She isn't as far along as she ought to be because I haven't been as consistent. Right. So who am I really upset with? My own self. So I'm gonna go take a deep breath, regulate myself, um, go spend some friendly time with the dog, just play a little bit instead of training and then see what that does for my mood. So that's what I'm done. So now I'm gonna click on the app. I'm gonna click done. And it's gonna, and then it comes up with your, you can't see it, but it's a big red screen. Oh, sorry, before I showed it, it went away. It was a big red screen and it said, um, your mood has been recorded, right? So it's not a value statement, you know, like, it's not good. It's not bad. It just is. It just is. We're just knowing what is. Uh, so once again, Mark Brackett, I will put the information in the show notes um, with the name of his book, as well as uh, the name of this app. Um, and again, if you are a person who has 
not had the opportunity to kind of learn the language of your emotional, um, you know, I use that word climate because it is, it is, uh, there's a lot of moving, um, turbulent kinds of feelings in there. Uh, and sometimes that's pleasant and sometimes it's unpleasant. So as you're getting to know yourself, uh, really getting a handle on your language. And if you are parenting or caregiving and you're trying to teach young people, you don't have to get into all of the technical language, like, you know, the difference between cheerful and energized might be lost on like a three-year-old, but you could definitely teach them like yellow versus blue. You know, where are you emotionally with, you know, at any given point? Oh, you seem like you're maybe in red or you're feeling, it looks to me like you might be in the blue zone, right? And that just opens up communication, starts to teach um, emotional languaging. And then from there, you can work on emotion regulation. So hope you enjoy this app as much as I do. Look into the book or the videos if you want to learn more on this one. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one.